Hey guys, it is Sophia, the diabetic vlogger, and today I'm going to be filming a video about the passing of the great late drummer Neil Peart from Rush. I found out about this Friday afternoon about 3 o'clock, and when I first found out, I was shocked. I have been a Rush fan for 12 years now. Um, I have been following them steadily through the years. I saw them on the Snakes and Arrows too, on the Time Machine and Clockwork Angels, and once on R40. I've seen them a total of eight times. I have read pretty much all of Neil's books except some of his Falling Away ones because I read all those stories pretty much on his website. And if you go check out his website now, it is closed down. They put a picture of him on it. So, um, he apparently died on Tuesday of suffering brain cancer <clears throat> for three and a half years and very few people knew about it. He left behind his wife, um, Carrie, who's a photographer, and Olivia, his ten and a half year old daughter. Um, and it is just so sad, especially after he lost, you know, his wife to cancer and his daughter, you know, a long time ago. And Maybe he knew he had it sooner or he felt like he had cancer off since he's had it for three and a half years. He did not probably know when he retired from the band, but there was rumors that he had some sort of health problems besides, you know, arthritis and things like that from getting older. But he was just 67 years old and I've seen so many people post nice posts on Facebook and I just want to post too. I want to do some more. I know I've showed you guys a, video, a picture. Uh, I mean, I showed my video, the letter I wrote to Neil a long time ago, and I want to find it and repost it to uh, and post it like on Facebook and Instagram f for you guys to see. Um, I know that for me it's kind of heart wrenching because I know with all the fans how close we feel to the Rush family and to him with his passing with his ideology of you know a stranger cannot be a long way to friend I feel like that's like kind of stabbing him in the back after he's already gone even when he was alive I'm like if I met him I just got after he's not you know he's not anything but a human being because that's what he is that's what all musicians are they the they're a human being yes they've been able to learn how to do something amazingly and they have a gift you know a gift from god and from talent and working so hard to be great musicians and a drummer and a lyricist and a writer and a friend and a father but at the end of the day they have family and they have things they need to do and i was sad when they left and i feel like now that he's actually gone it's really going to be closing in on all the ideas that people have of you know, them having a reunion tour. So they're still talking about that, which I think is really crazy to think of that, about that because they talked about, you know, they're never going to be rushed without one of them, and especially without Neil. And since Neil's gone, that really means Rush is gone. But thankfully, they left a legacy of, of music. We have 20 studio albums and live albums and concert DVDs, and I'm planning on rewatching all of them. Um, and thankfully, with music, you have to listen to for a long time. And now everything has been on the internet and having CDs and LPs and tapes. We can listen to them over and over again. And they'll, be, they'll, always be, they'll always be special in our hearts. I know lots of people are having probably a harder time than I have with. I did feel very kind of like clouded the day I found out. Plus, I was feeling bad just from the weather. It's been dark and depressing and raining outside. and that on top of that just kind of, you know, put a nail in the coffin. But, you know, he did live a long life and he, he did what he loved and I was just read the slog article about talking about him about being a family man. You know, he left because he wanted to spend time with his daughter Olivia because he felt so bad, you know, being on the road all the time, missing her girl up, but he didn't want to miss that, which I consider a great quality and I completely understand that. I know probably when I first met I wasn't as understanding about it, but Please let me know in the comments down below or you guys wanted to post a video or whatnot um, about, you know, what Rush meant to you. I 
when I first fell in love with Rush, the first song that made me really a Rush fan was Losing It, which I found out was about Ernest Hemingway and me being a reader and being the geekish person I am. It made me fall in love with it, and the song had violin, and it was so beautiful, and it's just like one of the mellower songs, and it was so amazing to see it live on, that was, that was like one of the, probably the best I think like I've expected off of the last tour was getting them to see them play it live and it was just amazing with the orchestra. I'm so glad they did that. That was that was that would have definitely been on my rush music bucket list. Um and so I listened to Hemispheres the other day on like Friday Saturday I was listening to Hemispheres and I listened to Grace Under Pressure because that was probably one of my first favorite albums would be Grace Under Pressure and shortly after that it was Counterparts and then Hold Your Fire and the newest one I already fell in love too would be Hemispheres of 21 to Pop as well as Tales of the Kings which are awesome albums. I still need to listen to Fly By Night some more. Um, I've also listened to the first album Rush a lot more except um, he was not on the album, obviously, but it had Getting Alex in it, and it was still a really good album. So I just had this realization yesterday that both the drums of Rush had passed on, and um, it's just so sad for the Rush family, for their friends. Um, you know, I wonder if he had some type of treatment. He had a glioblastoma, which is unoperable, so he probably had to. Although the article I read said he did try to keep all living as long as he can for his family and I just I feel so bad for his for his daughter I feel bad he took some more time with his family but he lived a good life and he defies people in a positive way and he'll always be the job of rush to us and to our hearts he left so many music, good music and lyrics and me being I really need to start playing music soon. So this week I've been starting learning how to play bass guitar because I've wanted to do this for 12 years and I haven't done it yet. And I've had a bass for about five years, so now's the time to do it. Because as it says, I'm losing it. It is better to have known it than to. Is it is better to know. It is better to know of it than never not to know it at all. And no, I just messed it up. But that was basically, you know, it is better. It's better to have known it than to never known at all. You know, that you had a gift or there's something you loved. And that's true with Rush that we need to remember that it's better to have known of Neil Pert and Rush and how awesome they were. Even though it's gone, we still have memories. I know I have so many good memories of concerts and watching DVDs and going to buy Rush stuff at the store. So I think you, maybe what I'll do this um, month is I want to kind of do a reflective Rush story maybe on YouTube or on Facebook and Instagram and talk about my different rough stories because I've got a lot of them. I know I've kind of talked about it some on my channel, but I do more in depth. So Neil Perch, you'll be missed. Rush, you'll be missed. I hope you are in a better place. I hope maybe you're with your family members. I hope and I hope that your last moments on earth with your family were very special and memorable and we thank you for your service of music and love and I wish you all the best. I wish you well. Hope you guys like this video. Please leave a comment down below and I'll see you guys next time with our video. Goodbye.